Oh, blessed Father, thank you. We come now in the name of Christ. We come now to sit at your feet. We come now to be amazed by you. We come now to recognize you are so awesome. You are omnipotent, omnipresent. You are omniscient. You are perfect in all of your ways. Thank you, Father, for everything that you are for us. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, thank you for your Holy Spirit's power who lives in us to cause us to know you even better, to walk with you and in accordance with your ways. Thank you for sealing us until the day of redemption. It is all the work of God. It is your work and not our work, and we are grateful. We come confessing our sins, Lord. I come confessing my sins, thanking you so much for your cleansing power, for your righteousness, which is the power behind cleansing me from all unrighteousness, and I thank you. Thank you for your word today, God, as we look into your prophet's heart where you have moved on his heart by your spirit to proclaim your word. Thank you for Habakkuk, O oh Lord. We thank you for your truth that you share with us through him. And as we see and hear these truths, we pray, Father, that we are by your spirit's power able to receive them unto ourselves and apply, apply them to our own persons that you are magnified and glorified in our lives, that our testimonies and witness for you will bring you pleasure and honor. We thank you so much, God. Thank you for walking us through your scriptures because your scriptures, they give us life. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. So we are going to be starting a new series today and we're going to walk through the book of Habakkuk. And Habakkuk is not a, one of those very famous prophets if you will but it is not the fame of the prophet that we look at. It is the power of God's most holy word and we're grateful today that he as always, gives us his word. Uh, Habakkuk part one, why does God allow wickedness to continue? Uh, can we stand as we, if you can, stand as we read verses one through four in the book of Habakkuk chapter one? The verses say the burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear, even cry out to you violence and you will not save? Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me, there is strife and contention arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, therefore perverse judgment proceeds. And the Lord, please add blessing to you, the reading and the hearing of your word and strengthen us, God, that we will do it. Let's be seated. Does God really care? Does God care? Is he up there looking down on a world and ignoring all the suffering and murder and stealing and vileness 
and the extreme moral depraved acts and activities of humanity. There are wars between nations and these happen with regularity and with much loss of life. People are frequently slaughtered all over the world in the name of genocide for reasons that are impossible to justify. Our society is in a perpetual state of moral decay. Things that would have been unthinkable less than 30 years ago are now totally acceptable. Stay with me because I'm desiring to paint a picture so that you can more easily embrace what God is sharing about himself through his prophet. We have uh, digressed to abortion on demand with progression to partial birth abortions. Sexual perversion and pornography is available like candy. Child abductions, molestation, and murder abound. The corruption in the halls of government has become not only a tolerated practice, but an expected one. The drug culture has taken a tremendous toll on society. Uh, the fact that all these aforementioned ills seem to go unchecked causes one to understandably ask the question, does God really care? Some even ask the question, does God even exist? But a tangent to that, where we aren't going to spend any time, is that the fact that all of these ills of our society are going on, and it seems to go on continuously, even proves the existence of God. But one again is led to ask the question after seeing all that goes on unchecked, it seems, does God really care? The prophet Habakkuk was faced with the like similar question. Habakkuk was uh, the prophet given to Judah, the southern kingdom, and his name means uh, the embracer. Now, the, the, the name embracer that Habakkuk means points to several things. Points to his love and commitment to God because he embraced all that God is. He, embr he embraced everything that God was doing, but it also speaks to in light of the perplexing situation that comes from what we see going on and God being sovereign, no matter what happened or went on, he embraced what God was doing. He embraced the truth that God is sovereign. What about you? When you consider everything that's going on, that which would even cause you to have doubts or be perplexed in your view of God, 
uh, whether God really cares or if God is concerned with what is going on, are you able to embrace God no matter what is happening? Are you able to, as Habakkuk proclaims, are you able to live by faith? Because the circumstances and conditions of life can cause one to question whether or not God really cares. Now, Habakkuk prophesied to Judah just before Nebuchadnezzar invaded Judah in 605 BC. He was commissioned to announce the Lord's intention to punish Judah by putting them in captivity at the hands of the Babylonians. This is what Habakkuk's responsibility was. In other words, to communicate to God's people what God is doing even in light of the perplexing circumstances that he was surrounded by. Let's look at what Habakkuk was surrounded by. He expresses a problem, and that problem is expressed in verses one through four. And basically, again, the, the question is, why does God allow the continuation of wickedness in light of him being all-powerful and sovereign? In other words, God, you can stop things when you want to stop them. The context, of course, is Judah and Habakkuk ministering to God's people, Judah. But let us also take advantage of the truth that applies even today. Because we know that God's truth, his word is absolute. It is not dependent upon the circumstances or how I feel or how I see things or my opinions. His truth is absolute, meaning that it is eternal and applicable across all generations. So I would like for us in consideration of the context to also be able to apply God's truth to what is happening today because his truth applies. Now, as we uh, revealed in the introduction that wickedness not only was extreme in Judah, but wickedness goes on seemingly unchecked today, even in our own culture. So that being the case, if that be true, which it is, we need to find out what God is doing. Because that's the question that Habakkuk had. God, what are you doing? God, what's going on? The, 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 the word of God is given to us so that we can become more familiar with the heart of God, with the person of God, with God's personality. God, how do you operate? What God is and are your intentions in light of these situations? Because the closer we draw to God, 
the more we become familiar with his heart, with his heart, the more we become familiar with his mode of operation, his modus operandi, then we can grow in our trust and we can grow in our faith to God. Because we all go through stuff. We all are dealing with things. And the commonness that we have here is that we're dealing with a society that is depraved in all of its functioning. And believe it or not, it affects you. But what is God doing? God, do you really care? Are you on high looking down low to see all of this that's going on? Habakkuk states the problem, and he states that again in one through four. The first thing that Habakkuk does is, as we are told that he is given a burden in verse one, which he saw, God has given him something to share with his people. He's given him the burden of Judah, and God has commanded Habakkuk, just as he commands every preacher of the word, to tell the truth. No matter how the people look at you, no matter what the people's life situations may be, tell the truth because Habakkuk, that's love. When God shares his truth, he shares it because of his love. No one, no creature of God has the right to compromise God's truth and the sharing of his love. Habakkuk, Habakkuk has been given the burden and he says that, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry? Now, what Habakkuk is saying is that, Lord, all of this you see going on, all of what is happening in the kingdom of Judah, you see it, Lord. How long must I cry? How long do I keep crying out to you, God? Well, Habakkuk is doing something that we all should be doing on a regular. That is crying out to the Lord in good times, in bad times, in high times, in low times, in neutral times, all times we are to be crying out to the, but Habakkuk is saying, Lord, how long do I cry? How long are you willing to cry out to the Lord? How long are you willing to give yourself to prayer to the Almighty? How long are we willing to let our knees go scarred up? How long? Habakkuk is posing here a statement. Lord, I'm crying, and I'm crying concerning this wickedness of Judah, and this wickedness of Judah is continuous. Okay, so we're going to see how the similarities of what Judah is going through and what Judah is doing, how Judah is behaving of, and, the, and, and what the behaviors are today. He says that uh, the cry is that the wickedness is on. He says, and you will not hear. Lord, how long am I going to cry out and you don't listen? I mean, Habakkuk's problem is that it doesn't seem that God cares. But B 
be comforted because no matter how it looks, God cares for you. Because folks go through things and the first thing that will come into their thoughts is that no one cares. But God cares. If nobody else cares, if nobody else reaches out, if nobody else shows concern, you know that God cares. We are here to uplift the, all, uplift the Almighty. We're not lifting up people <laughs> because we all need some help. God cares. Have confidence that God cares for you, no matter what's going on. You say yourself, say to yourself over and over as long as it takes, God, I am struggling. God, this place is a catastrophe. God, this place is all out of order. God, but I know that you care. Give him his glory. Because what we will do is we will assign to God what we assign to people. God is not a man that he would lie. He's not us. Don't assign your emotions to God because God is not us. He cares. But that doesn't mean you don't ask the question or are moved to ask the question because Habakkuk asked the question. God said, Habakkuk said, God, how long do I cry out? And some of us, praise God for the crying out, have been crying out a long time. Now, it's good to be crying out because you're praying. But even in our prayers, some folks been waiting a long time. God, what you doing? You ever ask that question? I've asked that question. God, please give me a little bit <laughs> to keep me encouraged. He always does, though. But God, what you doing? It just seemed like it ain't nothing happening or all this evil. It, it's just over. It's extreme, God. God, what you doing? But you know what? It's so good to have God's word. Because even in the silent times, even when you in your closet, oh, you got God's word. And you know what? I can go to God's word and say, you know what, Lord? I see what you're doing. If nobody else see it, uh, you know, God, you calm, cool, and collected. You know what, Lord? I'm going to be that way too. Because I can't do nothing. We can't do nothing. It is all the power of God. Even your salvation. It's God's work. That just blesses my heart. Because I know, because it has happened before, I mess it up. And I mess it up. You mess it up too. We ain't, yeah, we, we mess it up. <laughs> we all in this club. <laughs> That's another thing. We, we, we gonna talk about Wednesday. I'm just, I'm just off track. I know y'all. Lord, Pastor, just stay with the text. <laughs> I'm gonna stay with it. <laughs> but Wednesday, we gonna talk about pride. Because God been working with me. So y'all get it too. <laughs> you know. Now he says, even cry out to you violence. The stuff that was going on in Judah, it was violent. It was crime, criminals in the street. Folks being abused and misused, folks being idolaters, folks being wicked. Habakkuk is seeing all of this, and what's going on is internal to Judah as he's pointing it out. 
Y'all see all this stuff that's going on in our culture? It's all internal. Now, the Lord had not sent Babylon yet to discipline and chastise Judah. But it was a lot of evil and wickedness going on in Judah. That's what the preacher is talking about. He's talking about what's going on in our culture. Internal. I want to just say one thing about our great United States. And y'all know I don't politicize anything, but I'm going to say this because I know there is no nation on this planet that can come against the United States of America militarily or economically. I work in that business, so I know. Now, what the problem is, is what's going on in the house, not outside the house. All of this that's going on in our streets, all of these cultural ills, we think we okay, cause can't nobody come against our shores. But internally, we are being crushed. I say we, United States, I'm not talking about Christians. We are being crushed. And folks don't recognize it. So the preacher says, Lord, we crying out. Do you, do you know we are God's representatives? We ought to cry out. Lord, please bring these people to their senses. Please, please, Lord. How long? As long as it takes. Why? Because we know that God is doing something. Now Habakkuk is asking this question because Habakkuk don't have all the, didn't have all the scriptures like we do. Okay? So Habakkuk, he is functioning under the power of the Holy Spirit, however, with some limitations. Not of God, not limitations in God, but limitations of what he knows. We have all the scriptures, so we know what God is doing. So these questions are answered for us. He says, all of this violence, and you will not save. Lord, do you care that our children are being slaughtered? Do you care, Lord, that all corrupt folks are functioning in our government? lying to our faces? Do you care that the drugs are coming in, poisoning everybody? Do you care, Lord, that immorality reigns and that everything that is wicked is pumped across our phones and our computers? Lord, do you care? Do you care that babies are being slaughtered, sacrificed to Moloch? Do you care, Lord? Do you care that all of this is happening? Do you see, Lord, Lord, will you save? Will you save? Habakkuk's problem is that, God, you are all in all. Do you care? Then he tells us that he has a complaint. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? Now, what does it mean when you ask the question, God, why are you showing me all of this? As Habakkuk asked the question, you're showing me all this iniquity. You're showing me all this sin. But what is it when God decides to show us the sin of others? But let's not forget our personal sins. 
because God desires in showing Habakkuk as he desires to show us some reasons in him showing us the sin and iniquity. Now let's consider ourselves. When God shows me my sin, it's humbling. He humbles me because of his love, he shows me where I am falling short or missing the mark. That's what sin is. To miss the mark of God, to fall short of his standard. He also allows me the privilege of remaining submissive to him. God wants us to remain in submission to him. When he shows me the areas where I am not submissive, which is sin, then now I can give myself, make the choice to give myself to being submissive to him. So, so, so there is a reason that you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble. He also wants me to value my redemption. We know that we are redeemed of the Lord. We know that even in the midst of our sin, our sinful behaviors, even in the midst of all of that, we know that we are redeemed. Do you value your salvation? Do you value what God has done through his holy son? Do you value, we are to value our redemption. Now, when he shows you the sin and iniquity of others. Oh, Lord, not wanting to be like the publican, but only by the grace of God go I. It is so easy to be that one which is in the situation of continuous wickedness, continuous depraved, depraved behaviors. So I am able, because of what God is showing me, I'm able to say, Lord, I praise you because that could have been me. We are not to look upon those who are lost, dead, trespasses, and sin, who are behaving in a depraved way because they are depraved. A snake acts like a snake because he's a snake. A depraved one acts depraved because he is depraved. But we are not to be looking down on nobody because it were one time you and I were depraved also. He delivered us. I ain't always been saved. Nor have you. So when God shows me what's happening in the culture, being surrounded by all, do not, let's not make judgment on anybody, we are to be crying out. We are to be crying out for people. Folks don't need to be condemned because in their lostness, God says they are condemned already. We are not to, we don't have to, we are not supposed to condemn anyone. But you don't have to, that doesn't mean that because you don't condemn that you must accept. Because if you accept, you're not going to pray for them. You're going to be like, let it, let it, that's okay. Let that happen. 
<laughs> Let them teach what they want to teach in our schools to our kids. Let them uh, celebrate certain observances. And we just say, okay, that's good. Let us accept whatever the evil one wants to promote and say that's But that is not what we're supposed to do. Habakkuk starts out with, Lord, how long do I cry? It wasn't like Habakkuk was saying, I ain't crying. I ain't going to pray. I ain't going to. He said, how long do I do this? Lord, how long do I pray? How long do I cry out? I'm doing it. I'm going to keep doing it. I would just like to have a little answer. How long? I'm not saying I ain't going to do it. But you know, when you're waiting, it's good for somebody to tell you, be able to tell you, this is how long you're going to have to wait. But that's not our testimony. God said he's not looking for anybody to put a timetable on him. He's just looking for his people to be faithful. Live by faith, not by sight. Because, you know, if, if we only live by sight, we wouldn't be here today. We're here because we love God. We trust in him. He's faithful. Because I tell you, and you can say amen to it also, I know. Because if I was sitting out there, I'd say amen to this too. It's been some stuff that I've tried to focus my attention on that wasn't going the way I thought it should go or expecting it to go. Oh, I was getting tired that I just walked away from. Don't let that be our testimony. Keep crying. Keep crying. And then he tells us that it gives us the opportunity to hate the sinfulness of sin. Don't you just hate what's going on when you look out there in the community? Don't you just, don't you just hurt for people? Don't you just hate the devastation? Do you know that when God saw the fall of his exalted angel, Satan. God grieved. We think that uh, God was just, you know, indifferent. But the scriptures tell us that God grieved over his rebellion. So we should hate what we see. We should, it, it, it lets us, it helps us to hate the sin and Finally, to appreciate his grace. God's grace is amazing. It's an amazing grace. It's amazing. And we, from what we see, can appreciate his amazing grace. And finally, he describes for us the condition in verse 4. Okay, so now he says, therefore, the law is powerless. In Judah, there was lawlessness. In, in Judah, folks were living and doing whatever they wanted to do, and they were God's people. But when we look at our society, it is a place of lawlessness. Y'all see all the smash and grabs on the television? Y'all see all of the, the police are Helpless when folks are going into stores, grabbing stuff, running out. They tell the police, don't try to apprehend anyone. They tell, they tell the legal system, if they, if they steal and it's not a certain level, don't worry about it. If, if, if you get arrested, they tell them that don't charge them any bond. Just let them go. What do they call that? No cost bail or no cost bond, no fee bond. It is lawlessness. The system is broken. It has no power. And this is where we live. Now, 
You can't live in a society where there's lawlessness. And man needs laws because man is sinful. If man wasn't sinful, we wouldn't have to worry about locks and keys. In the meeting yesterday, you remember this, Reverend? We were talking about the security of the building. And right away, my mind went like, I wish we didn't have to talk about the security of the building. I wish we didn't, we, we were talking about we need cameras, we need some stuff to monitor. Why do we have to talk about that type of stuff? Well, the reason is, is because man is sinful. And we live in a period of lawlessness. He says here that the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. There is no justice. There was no justice in Judah. This is what Habakkuk is screaming out to the Lord about. And there is no justice in the streets of America. There is no justice. He says, for the wicked surround the righteous. Doesn't it appear that righteous folk are outnumbered? It's like wickedness all around. Good folk, righteous folk, folk you can be safe around are very few in number. I notice this. I know this is how I know I'm getting older. I used to go anywhere I wanted to go when I was young and had a little more strength. I would go anywhere I wanted to go and wouldn't worry about where I parked, where I was going, looking behind me. I didn't worry about none of that. But now, when I go to my favorite place, Walmart, daytime or nighttime, I pull up and I'm doing the check. I'm looking around because I don't want nobody walking up on me because I ain't as strong as I used to be. I can't run as fast as I used to be able to run. But, but, but it just seemed like the unrighteous folk are all over the place. And I find myself trying to assess folk when I see them. I'm like, I wonder if they okay. <laughs> if they gonna try to do something to me. Because it seems like the righteous folk are outnumbered. You know, I feel real safe when I come in the church house. I'm like, oh, I ain't, I ain't surrounded by nobody but righteous folk. The righteousness of Christ is everybody's testimony. It's Christ right. I ain't worried. You know, y'all not worried to be in here with the right. These, these are brothers and sisters in Christ, righteous folk. But as soon as I leave out of here, I'm going to check. I'm going to look. I tell my kids, my girls especially, and I, I, you know, I thought I was doing something. I got them some, uh, <laughs> some mace keychains. <laughs> uh, I, I really wanted to send them a 4-5. No, I don't. No, I didn't. I'm just talking. So I just got them mace. Like, please carry your mace, because you be going to your car at night, have it in your hand, so you can, you know, don't kill nobody, just spray them so you can run. Y'all with me? Habakkuk said, this is what he was seeing in Judah. It's God's people. But, but we see it in our streets. He says, the wicked outnumber the righteous, therefore, he says, perverse judgment goes on. Y'all, we got to pray for this place because this is our testimony. No matter what goes on, God cares for us and he cares about what's happening even to the lost. 
but he has given his son to secure us all. Today is a day of salvation. He says that if you come and accept his son, you are secured for eternity. You shall live forever. Today is the day of salvation. Won't you come? Let's all stand. Today is the day of salvation. Today, knowing Jesus is your opportunity, your privilege, and your honor. To know him, if you have not come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ yet, please come in your heart, confess that Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Please, even in your heart it is the Lord's desire that with your heart belief is made unto righteousness today is the day Father thank you we praise your name thank you so much for showing us that even in Habakkuk's time you desired that people would know that you cared even now, Lord, you desire that people know that you care. There are many, God, that would even say that you don't exist because of everything that's going on. Because if you did exist, being all-powerful, being all-loving, that you would eliminate all of the depravity and the the wretchedness and the suffering and the pain, that you would do that if you could. But Lord, we know, we who are your children, we know that you do care and that even being all powerful, being all loving, being all knowing, even that being the case, you desire that we cry out, that we cry out and keep crying out until you decide to move. Lord, thank you for caring for us. We praise your name and we give you all the honor. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. To him be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. All of God's people said amen, amen, amen and blessings to everyone forever.